Hi, everybody, and welcome back for episode six. Uh, we discussed shrinking that outside flange for the Hawker Typhoon's forward monocoque frame segments uh, during episode five. And today, the episode continues on with how I stretch the inside bends on that exact same part. So next up is the stretch flange, and um, we can use the same set of form blocks that we just had. We're going to do, uh, this is the one that we used for our shrinky flange, so it still nests nicely in here, but now it is the backing block for this guy, which is uh, going to be our form block. This is the inside flange, it's a double flange, and it's a J shape. Uh, so there's no angle to it other than 90 degrees, I guess. <laughs> Unlike the outside angle, that actually changes all the way around the fuselage and gets fairly complex. So the same thing, we'll put these back together using the same pins, using the same tooling holes. Everything works quite well. Again, this flange has extra meat on it that'll have to be trimmed down. Uh, it makes it a little bit trickier when we start going, um, but I'm pretty comfortable with it. These. Uh, smaller flanges towards the back of the aircraft are getting pretty pretty small here so just have to go a little easier but this is one of those cases where I was talking about knocking the flange over slowly for that shrink flange and slowly bringing it down well this one is a pretty drastic amount of stretch that we're gonna need as it comes around uh, towards us I guess but it's gonna come around that way and um, because it's a now a concave form that's what makes it a stretch flange. We need more material. It'll reduce the thickness of the material and stretch over, over that distance. So uh, in this case, I'm intentionally not gonna knock it down slowly along the whole length. I'm gonna knock it down fairly hard and try and stretch that flange as it comes over. Okay, so you can see that's <laughs> basically 90 degrees. Well, it's vertical back around here, uh, so it's pulling this material. It's trying to pull it apart to get that, which is exactly what I want it to do, because it's going to help me and I'll have to do less work later if I strike this flange down correctly. Same thing, uh, glancing blows in this case. Because I'm doing it this way, I'm glancing towards myself. It'll also help pull that material over. too far our pin is right here so I'm gonna go ahead and put this over this side this causes a lot of stress on the guy the guy being the form block so I'm gonna give it a little bit of backup this way and see what happens I'm also gonna put one over here for S's and G's So there's our rough stretch flange. Just like shrinking, there's always adverse effects. And it's only an adverse effect if uh, you haven't really completed the movement, whether it be shrink or stretch. You're gonna have a flange take an awkward shape that you don't expect if you're shrinking or stretching, if it's not complete. So you notice by completing the amount of shrink for the angle that we had to bend that last flange, it took care of any warp on the web. Well, now in its early state uh, for our stretch, stretch flange, still a little extra on there, that's okay. Uh, for our preliminary shape, you'll notice that it also changes the angle of the web. So we'll have to see how it goes here. But basically, if in this case, it's a little bit overstretched, which is good because of the next move. Um, so 
Let's see if you can see it. If you look down, you'll see that the uh, web is actually this way now. So there's extra material here. Maybe a little bit too much, which is okay. We can shrink it. We don't want to. Um, but the next step, because this flange gets trimmed down, that'll take some of it out, and then it's going to get bent back, which is going to require even more stretch on that second flange. So we'll go with what we have here, and the uh, first step is going to be to uh, let's trim this. And uh, Emma has come to visit us. She's right here. Hey, Emma. So we've got it back in the form block. It's been trimmed down and now I'm going to give the final shape to the flange and uh, make sure our radius is uh, hunky dory. So the same exact same process as with uh, the shrink flange now. It's just making sure that it's flat and making sure that we have the right radius. And we're going to want to work nice and slowly. We're not uh, trying to shrink or stretch in this case. We're just trying to form. So the reason that I cut that die down like that is so I have a nice straight true edge and I can, at an angle with the gun, kind of grab that radius with it. And then when I go to the face of the flange, I turn, turn it 90 degrees like that and stabilize it with my finger. So now we've got the proper radius on there. I'm thinking we still have a little bit of uh, shape issues. We do. So uh, now we've got to do a little bit of work on that. I think what I'm going to do, I'm still happy that this has a little bit of extra stretch in it uh, because that next angle is going over and it's going to stretch and it's a really difficult one to, um, to get the stretch onto it when you bend it 90 degrees. There's no way to get the, the uh, jaws in there so it's more of a hammer form and a roll form and I'll, I'll show you what I do anyway uh, when we get there but having a little bit is what I'm looking for uh, I should also point out that you don't want to leave these um, say that that shrink flange I don't like to leave it when there's still a little bit of work to do and then move on to the next step because even if it's just a little bit off you'll end up because you can see now, it looks like maybe there's something over shrunk there because there's a curve there. Well, it's not. That was all true when we moved on to the next bend, so we know where the problem lies, or we know where the work requirement is. This stuff's good. So back to the form blocks. In this case, we stick with this form block because you can see, hold on, hold on here. You can see that we have a reduced profile. I don't know how to mess with that, but anyway, we have a reduced profile here, which is going to form that secondary bend coming back that way. Um, it's a little bit off now still because we have that extra material in here. Extra material and it's a little bit overstretched along this flange which is going to help us ultimately. Uh, but now we're not going to use this. This was our form block that we for our shrink flange that we used as our vacuum block. That one's no longer valid because we need to support we need to support this side from bowing out as we bend that over. So the next form block is a little bit more sophisticated, but it sits here. And our shrink flange will go around that. Just uh, it's cut down so it, uh, it clears it. It has two lean holes as well, and uh, so it supports everything really nicely. And I'll clamp it down uh, to get rid of that extra little bit of movement. And you can see that it backs up right in here, backs up that area so it doesn't bulge out. Now. It's pretty tricky to control with a small bend. This is, uh, I think it's a half inch from outside to outside, and this is approximately 40 thousandths of an inch. So uh, we're looking at 420 thousandths of an inch. So it's hard to get that really truly flat in here with the pressure that we're forming. Uh, so I've got a set of dies for the bead roller that are actually designed to go in there and they'll chew it up after we're done. But we have to go through this process. So this goes into the vise just like the other ones did. It's all supported. There's going to be less pressure on the support of that. And then I switched to a, uh, 
another die for the rivet gun that's narrower to fit into this channel. Uh, first thing, I'll probably use the, the standard one uh, to knock it down about 45. I don't want to overstretch it at this point because I can't go in there and shrink it. So I'm going to be fairly careful with it. Um, and we'll switch to this die. Knocked over that flange and uh, it's a bit long still and it's not necessarily shaped correctly yet. Uh, I'm going to trim it down and then I'll run it through the dies and we'll be hunky-dory. So I'm going to take this out of the form block now. You can see that's quite tight, tightly wrapped around there. Um, so I've got a couple wedges that I usually use. I'll just see. Yeah. Maybe there. There we go. Another thing you might have noticed is that there is uh, white paint on that edge. And with this MDF, the medium density fiber board, it, it's a lot harder towards the surface or the face of the panel than it is in the middle. And uh, to try and preserve that radius, I've used this uh, very absorbent paint. I think it's called Kills or something, um, but it absorbs and penetrates very deeply and it, it hardens and it's actually I've found that it does help quite a bit if I'm going to have to make one or two pieces. If the aircraft's nose was that way, this is how it would sit. You can see the profile. Outer flange on the skin has a varying angle around it. This one's 90 degrees. We've got to trim this and true it still though. So I'll start with a trim. One thing to note is to uh, never cut to the end of the shear. If you snip off the end, you'll get a crack. Uh, coming off the end of the shears and into your material and uh, it's always going to go into where you, you don't want it to be and you're going to scrap the part just like that. So this is the die set that I've built or modified for these uh, these frames and you can see that it's it's designed with the proper radius and it'll run through here and make sure that we have a nice flat face and that our corners are uh, true to 90 degrees. Now for this I've left the um, PVC plastic on there, but if it wrinkles in there too much, it has to come off because it'll start to mark the l -clad. So not a huge amount of pressure, more just shaping. That gives us a pretty, pretty good looking flange. Now, this one here, this top flange, needs a little bit more work still, so we'll go back to the bench for that one. So I have a series of bucking bars that I've modified as dollies for uh, shaping the fuselage components. There's, there's a couple of them and a couple, uh, where did I put one of those? <laughs> a couple of these guys, just little plastic punches and, and things like that that really help out to get some of the tighter curves. In this case, I use this guy here for that last little bit, you can see if you look down low, that secondary bend is not quite 90 degrees, so we're going to make it 90 degrees. So we've got now we've got a nice straight edge on there. It's not flopping all over the place. We've got a nice even bend. The dies have made a nice face there. Got a nice 90 on here and ultimately we've got a fairly nice part there. So we still have that little bit of extra material but we're going to take that down uh, with a sander. I'm also going to do some marking here. I'm going to mark out and take off that extra material on all of these tabs. There we go, and um, I've got my handy dandy die grinder. I'm just going to start off with a sanding disc on it, um, just to clean off the serrations from those uh, the shears, aviation snips. So here's our part. Uh, the camera died just as I was doing some deburring on the edges. But all I did was run the uh, die grinder 
with a non-woven disc on it across. It's a fairly rough deburr at the moment. I'll do more when um, when we get them back from heat treatment. There'll be more trimming and uh, very little and just the finishing touches after straightening post heat treat. So for now, uh, I also forgot to mention that throughout the process, you have to make sure because of the adverse effects of shrinking and stretching, I've, uh, you have to make sure that the part sits flat because if it doesn't sit flat on your form block then it's not going to sit flat in your fixture and you're going to be fighting it and you're going to be fighting it even more after heat treatment because if it's not sitting flat before it goes in and it distorts you really you start losing your baseline pretty quick <laughs> so basically I, for whatever flange I've bent I look at it I set it on the form block and you want to make sure that it's nice and even all the way along and sits nicely in there. So there you go, that's the stretching side of the production for the forward monocoque frame segments on the Hawker Typhoon. Uh, there's been a lot of really good feedback on this and uh, a lot of good feedback on the videos recently that I've been making. One of them is that the audio isn't mixed very well and I've tried to respond as best as I can. I'm new to this, but I've made some changes. So hopefully this, uh, this episode was a little bit better regarding audio. Our next episode is going to be actually about the magnetos on the Rolls-Royce Merlin. I found it really interesting what Rob Roy was doing with them, and I thought I'd share that with you. It's a pretty good understanding of how they work. I'm not an electrician. He knows a lot more than I do, so it should be a lot of fun. Um, in the meantime, I'm also working on this little project here, and this is a um, basically like a wall hanging or a plaque that can be used or put in a, a picture frame, and these circles represent locations for challenge coins and so this is just a general concept that I've been playing with right now and it's kind of an incentive or a reward or a thank you for all the people that subscribe to our paid channel so I still have a little bit of development to do on it but it'll have uh, in the locations here after certain periods of subscription you'll be able to get this coin and then after another certain period of time you'll get that coin but uh, I'll do a little bit more work on it might change the materials and have fun with it so if if this is something that you guys like, um, I welcome your feedback and ideas on, on the whole general concept of rewards for people that subscribe. Um, I'd like to get as many subscribers as we can because it all helps the project. So anyway, I'll leave you with that for now. Thank you guys all so much. Thank you for the comments. Keep going. I look forward to hearing from you, and uh, I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> Take care.